Greetings, friends. The briefing is devoted to exposing the lies of the aggressive state, which it uses in its propaganda both within Russia and internationally. Let's start with the fact that the aggressive state continues to spread nonsense about the seemingly some kind of preparation from Ukraine of some dirty bomb, in order to later allegedly accuse Russia of its use. The Minister of Defense of the aggressive state continues phone calls of the Minister of Defense with this false information. This time he spoke with uh, his colleagues in China at the level of the Ministry of Defense. We confirm what was said earlier. This information about the dirty bomb is a lie and a typical use of Russia's own false flag operation tactics. That is, operations when Russia itself does what it accuses others of. Interestingly, when the civilized world did not believe Russia, it tried to falsify evidence about the alleged preparation by Ukraine of this dirty bomb. This evidence was published on the official pages of state bodies of Russia, that is, for example, on the Twitter page of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Russian Federation. And as it turned out, when creating this fake evidence, old images of 12 years ago were used, which were taken and used in the official presentation by Slovenia when it reported on the management of nuclear waste. There is a nuclear power plant on the territory of Slovenia. In particular, these pictures depict smoke detectors, which are not specially used in the nuclear industry. That is, Russia not only distorts its own fake evidence by using archival photographic materials, but even shows that there is no relation to the creation of the so-called dirty nuclear bomb at all. Thus. While using this fake, it seems that the aggressor state reached the limit of absurdity and begins to include its own fakes and start to debunk them. In particular, it argues that the Ukrainian authorities, after the publication of this delusional, abandoned their plans. As one of the newspapers of the aggressor state writes, Komsomorska Pravda writes, one of the newspapers of the aggressor state, referring to non-existent insiders among the Ukrainian media. Our source in the office of the President of Ukraine said that they had to curtail all nuclear weapons development that had been carried out over the last year. Altogether, the Ukrainian President was sure that the main security guarantee was NATO or nuclear status. And after the Kremlin began to infuse the topic of dirty atomic bomb, Ukraine was forced to dissociate itself from this track as much as possible. It is full nonsense. Ukraine did not have such plans, does not have and will not have. This information campaign was launched with the sole purpose to reduce the level of support for Ukraine from Western partners who have set their shoulders after the beginning of Russian aggression on our land. No less absurd incident occurred with the Russian state propaganda agency Rio Novosti when it published the news that there seemed to be some kind of shootout between Polish mercenaries who are fighting on the side of Ukraine and the right sector volunteers. This message was posted on the official account of the aggressor state, but at the same time they used as an illustration a picture that was taken after the deoccupation of the Kharkiv region. It was made on September 12. The picture shows the Ukrainian military walking along the streets of the liberated city of Izium. In this way, Russia distorts the evidence, not only in terms of this dirty nuclear bomb, but simply the current news, in order to create the information background they need. Similarly, Russia invents military achievements after it lost occupied cities and equipment. Russia began to add new targets in its daily reports of the Ministry of Defense of the aggressor state. If earlier they reported on the destruction of tanks or aircraft, now they began to report about destroying Ukrainian pickups. Imagine, a pickup truck is a civil vehicle. I would not be surprised if Russia later begins to report on destroyed bicycles, scooters and other techniques. And finally, from the funny section. One of the representatives of the so-called party of war in the Russian leadership, the leader of Chechnya, Ramzan Kadyrov, is outraged that the Chechens and Caucasians in general do not volunteer and do not go to war on the territory of Ukraine. I call on all men and women, especially Chechens and Caucasians. Why are there no lines? Caucasians, I don't understand you at all. You must be the first to enlist. This only indicates that support for the war is falling in Russian society. And such posts are a sign of despair when Russia suffers from the lack of manpower that must go to Ukraine and die here. 
Our call to these people is to surrender. Do not be victims in the hands of these manipulators and aggressors. The traditional call at the end is not to trust the aggressor state and their propagandists, to trust the Ukrainian media, the Ukrainian telezone, the Ukrainian official authorities, the Ukrainian military and political leadership. See you.